recently on my review for Demon Wind, which itself was a request video, someone named C. Allen requested that I review either Vacancy or Creepshow 3. I'm a much bigger fan of Vacancy 2 than the original, so Creepshow 3 it is. This is an anthology film with several different stories going on, so we're going to have to move at a pretty quick pace. The movie begins with a high school girl being a complete jerk. Uh, a package. We're a package about what, this what does it look like? Okay. Why don't you go back to your computer, you okay, geek? I cannot wait to move out of this neighborhood. Uh, you already said that. Oh, that's my mom calling. I gotta go. Well, come rescue me, please. Okay, okay. I'll when she gets home, she learns that her father has purchased a universal remote, and it has the magical power of making her family worse and worse actors. Skinny, she'll never find a husband. She has no ass. <laughs> Grandma, is that how a dean talks? I'm off duty. <laughs> What's so funny about not having an ass? An ass is more important than tits. Tits are for amateurs. You tell me you've dumped the little brat, and we're going to the mall. She's too skinny. She'll never find a husband. She has no ass. <laughs> Mom, shame on you. I think this one's for the subtitles. Ay, my carne. Nunca va a encontrar marido si no saque esas buenas nalgas. <laughs> Each time her dad has a button on the remote, she becomes more and more deformed. But it doesn't stop her from being more of a bitch as she goes to the professor's house across the street thinking he can help and eating his wedding cake. As you might expect, the professor was behind the creation of the remote, trying to teach her a lesson to not be a bitch, a lesson she never learns until she falls apart under the weight of her own bitchiness. We move into the next story, where a security guard lives in a building full of hookers and pimps. Hey man, hey listen, hey. You looking for some companionship? Thanks. No, oh, no, man, I can set you up. I see you looking, man. I'm good. Yeah. Come on, man. Where are you? Hey! Hey, bitch! You got a permit to work my building? Hey! What the hell? He buys a discount radio on the street, and the radio begins talking to him. Desperate for money, he follows the radio's advice to steal money so he can invest it in the stock market. This movie is made in 2007, and the voice on the radio has the world's worst financial advice. You want to put some money in tech stocks. They'll never go away. But the important thing is to diversify. Right. There's over 300 grand here. The big move will be real estate, an income property, a duplex at least. Stocks, bonds, and of course, real estate. We're talking a wide array of growth industry as well as the more steady, conservative investment. Don't even fuck with commodities. If you've been sleeping under a rock, or just aren't American, as most of my viewers aren't, in the next two years after this movie is released, the stock market dropped by over 50%, real estate plummeted into worthlessness, and commodities doubled or quadrupled over the same time period. Mysterious radio voice. Worst financial advisor ever. As anthology movies do, the stories are connected. The hooker you saw walking down the stairs She's in the next story. Turns out she's a serial killer. Authorities believe that the latest rash of serial murders have been committed by a woman. They believe she may be a prostitute, and the local tabloids have dubbed the culprit the Call Girl Killer. She has claimed 10 victims so far, all male. Now back to Jim and Sports. Now it's about time. Call Girl Killer, huh? 
This one's really short, really telegraphed, really stupid. Her next John ends up being a vampire who kills her. Next, we get more connections to the past stories in the next one. As the professor from the first story, he is getting married, the wedding cake was real, and he invites his favorite past students to meet his fiance. He's been spending 20 years on artificial intelligence research, and they begin to believe that his wife might be a robot. I really have to try my chicken dumplings. Oh. <laughs> um. Dad and had to go to store to pick up something for me. Uh, Kathy, are you okay? To the store to pick up something for me. So I guess. Hmm. Uh, Kathy, why don't you sit down? Moving on to the longest and final complete story, we meet the world's jerkiest doctor. <laughs> Yo, man. See? Thinking good thoughts for you, huh? <laughs> Please, we need a doctor. Hey, what's going on? Bad dog. You could argue that it's kind of the homeless guy's fault. There's a huge black spot on the fucking hot dog he doesn't clean it off and just eats fucking tar. That's his own damn fault that he died. But he blames the main character and haunts him through the rest of the episode. But our main character totally deserves it because he's on probation, Doing clinic duty is punishment and is a total jerk. My sentence dictates that I spend 30 days here. I'm here. So what do we got? This is not a sentence, doctor. It's an opportunity to prove yourself. Ming, Ming Yi? Is that chink or jet? There you go. Next! <laughs> you are funny today. That's good. That's good. We'll see how funny you are whenever I break your arm again and reset it. Next! I'm sorry. If you know, if you'll take all of your clothes. And, and you know, why don't you just bend over the table? Take off your clothes and bend over the table. We'll take a quick look. But it's just right here. You know, it's ceiling. probably a symptom of a deeper problem. Let me grab my probe. We'll take a quick look. This story attaches all of our other stories. With the main character passing by the professor, buying things from the stoop where the guy had bought the radio, also, he attends a party at the apartment where the guy who bought the radio lived, and it's hosted by the vampire guy. It also turns out he was the one who dropped the business card for the serial killer hooker that the vampire picked up in order to call her for the third story. The first story is a pretty standard jerk getting what's coming to them story. The second one is by far the best and has a long story to it, uh, you want to know what's happening, you want to know what the voice is going to make him do, why she's making him do it, but it's severely marred by the fact that the voice wants him to rob people so he can invest in real estate in 2007, so no matter what he does, he's going to be fucked. The third story does a really bad job by telling you exactly what's coming and making it really obvious. Skip it. The fourth story, while kind of obvious and kind of telegraphed, has enough heart to it and comedy to it and characters that are built well enough that you actually want to see how it's going to end. The last story doesn't really make a whole lot of sense. In the first story, the girl's a jerk because she's a good-looking teenage girl, and in movies, they're jerks. But in the last story, he's just some schlubby doctor. There's no justification for his evil, no backstory for what's why he's like that. And it just doesn't make sense other than he's a bad guy, so he deserves it. Sure is not a good movie, but it's the third in the series. When is the third movie ever good? Let me know down in the comments what you want me to review next. 
Thank you for watching, and as always, I shall try to bear next time.